Hello, welcome back to Banner Saga. I visited the Heroes Camp because I was wondering, and apparently Ewin had eight points to allocate, and Ivor had six more. So yeah, pretty much under leveled. I checked all other guys, and now we are uh, up to date with them. So yeah, let's leave. Krumer still has one day left to fully recover, and we'll do that eventually. Not just not now. Look at that! shouts one of the clansmen. The caravan stops to watch Dredge pulling into the village you just passed through. I hope anyone who stayed behind got out alive, says Alec, but you have your doubts. They're coming, says Ivor, pointing out a line of Dredge leaving the village and marching towards you. As you watch, the red in front falls over, then the one behind it falls as well. You had one to the left. Neat! The archery student of Odd Leaves, who you are called deftly shooting a snow rabbit, is firing arrows down the hill, and the red doubles. That's incredible, says Odd Leaves, squinting. But we should get out of here. Uh, let her do a few more. Next shot bounces off a dredge armor, but the one after that doesn't, and the glasses falls to a knee, and the dredge goes down before you get moved again. Why don't you come along the next time you want to try out that bow? You don't need who knows. With a smile on her face. Yay, so we have another person to join our fight. That's good. The caravan consists of more clansmen than you ever expected. Accusation of sowing chickens, missing heirlooms, and concerns over daughter daughter's virtues are the sort of things you hear relentlessly. Even fighters complain of spreading too thin to protect everyone. Try to address the major issues. Wait, try to keep people useful, yeah. Firewood collection, scouting, gathering of edibles, weapons, training, and wagon repair keep your clansmen busy, busy and usually too tired to complain. The course slow the caravan, but the resulting peace and productivity feels worth. The godstone of Dundr passes around you. In the frozen climates here, it looks like the rock has split and is falling apart, held together only by the deep snow. Curiously, when standing between the stones, the wind drops off completely, picking it up again once you've passed through. I almost wonder if we should rest here for the night, says Ivor, who seems to have noticed the same thing. With all the snow around it, Dredge might not even be able to find us. Sure. You walk around camp before settling in. Along each strand of Dundur's massive beard is got a different part of his story, and you turn your head and to and fro to read it. While the Loom Mother was the first to create, she soon found a counterpart in Dundur, who embodied her idols ideals in a masculine form. Dundur took some of her creation, gave them beards, and showed them the secrets of smithing. Though many remember him just as fondly for teaching them games and songs of mirth. As the camp settles in, you notice a group of boys huddled around something. They show you an offering box carved into the custom itself. The box is an elaborate construction of interlocking pieces which slide around when touched. We can get it open, they tell you. It's like a puzzle. Let's try. The boys take turns working out the puzzle and give you tips when it's your turn. Though you don't seem to make much progress, eventually they leave to sleep until it's just you and a couple of your Canadian Tiamat stars. Okay. It's hard to know how long you spend fighting around the smooth puzzle pieces. Between people that you emerging from their tents, you know you're in trouble, exhausted from a long sleepless night. Worse still, 
The box remains close as I shuffle wearily along with the living caravan. Oh well. Thiefing bastards, you awaken to hear. The small band of old wells who had previously drained the caravan made over a substantial number of supplies while everyone slept. A watchman tells you, why in the depths were they allowed to join us to begin with? Well, they didn't sleep so much. Could have been worse. And they were helpful. In the distance, Hawks saw the smoulders like an old campfire. Even from here you can see black figures shambling through it. That looks like a dead town, remarks Ivor, confirming your impressions. There's usually survivors, at least reminds you. Check it out. I hope others will do the same for me. Dread are nothing we haven't faced before. Ivor grunts, but otherwise says nothing. Besides, it might throw below her off a scent a bit. <laughs> You head at a smart outdoor hawk store. As soon as you step foot in a small town, you think you've made a mistake. It thoroughly littered with corpses. Within moments, the threats are upon you as though you stirred up an angry hornet's nest. You draw your weapons. God damn it. I want another. I want Annette, that's for sure. Who wears it? You. So I'll give you your bracelet back. I want Annette to be promoted again. Okay, let's go back a bit. You to go further. I want, yep, go like this. Yeah, I think he, over here is good enough. You stay here. Okay, just start keeping his armor and his. Oh, okay, it was a bad idea. Oh, he's already at nine armor, so. There's that. Oh, that's gonna hurt. Uh, we can get over here and do the flail. Can you start hitting him? You need to move. Yeah, half his armor. God damn it! <laughs> Should have hit this guy. This is not nice. This is not pretty. I want uh, a lot to have a chance of killing the big, big guy. All he had to do is clear everyone. <laughs> Shake. 
can't kill him quite yet. Just she can get him. Hit nicely. But okay, hit his armor. And he's down. <laughs> oh, not. Okay, that's fine. That's very good. Get this guy first because he's annoying. I want his traps to explode. That's why I'm not gonna kill him just yet. Looks like 22. If so, I don't know why, but. Attack. This guy, because it's his turn now. Okay. Get his armor down. You go away. <laughs> Kill him. Yeah. You kill him. I need to take care of the last guy. And again, two good hurt. Yeah. But we need to and we need to rest a bit to get our morale morale back. We have any marked. This town is nothing but ghosts and now covered in more trash, but they still. Remarkably, as you're about to leave, you find an old man sitting quietly in a tattered marked stall with a couple items in front of him. He hums to himself as if nothing were wrong and seems to be in shock. Your classmen gather him into the cavern before you leave. I don't know if we've ever spoken. I'm Nid, you're Rook, I know. We've actually been traveling together for a long time. Isn't it strange how you can be so close to people and not know them? Every day I pass people I swear I've never seen before. I wanted to thank you for letting me join you. Where are you from? I don't think you're from Skolgur. I knew most of the people there. No, I had a house in Frostvale, but we were driven out when the dredge started to show up. My husband died trying to protect our home. My sons and I were thrown out into the fields. I'm sorry. Ekkil's men killed my husband. Now Ekkil is traveling with us. For a long time I was angry. Why did he get to live? Why did you decide for the rest of us? I look away momentarily, not sure what to say. But I've let you go. I have three sons and I don't want them to grow up with hatred in their hearts. That's why I wanted to thank you. Have you always been such a good shot? Honestly, I've never tried before Odleaf made me. I spent my whole life making clothes, cleaning, all this good, but I don't think it was all her doing. It feels right. I just look where I wanted to go. Anyway, I feel better. The caravan, the people worrying all day and making problems. 
Sometimes the rule is to in that misery. I'm glad I can do something helpful. You're welcome. Don't think any bit of it, we all have our own problems to deal with. If let me know if you need me to put an arrow in something. She returns to her tent where she, where her boys are waiting for her. Still we need rest. We can't rest okay. And let's leave. We only have 10 days worth of food, hopefully we'll get some more. Well, th there was a market, god damn it. <laughs> oh. The sounds of a skirmish alert you to a world surrounded by half dozen armed fighters. One man spouts you and shout, Leave us to our business, this world killed my father without reason. The world is about to respond when a man attacks, the giant swats the blade aside and simply watches for the next assault. Let us hear what the world has to say. The world shrugs as if unconcerned, saying, This one's father and I had a business deal. He lied. Now he's dead. Lies? shouted the man. You murdered him of a lie, you coward! The man wildly attacked the valve who detects them well enough, but you're uncertain of how long he'll keep enough. Let them settle it. You quickly decide them this minor scuffle between men and Val is not worth the caravan's precious time and none of your business. Besides, the warriors return with you, some more rel reluctantly than others. We can't solve everyone's problem. Problems, so. The godstone for Ingrid, goddess of knowledge, looks on as the caravan takes us a much needed rest. Ivor shoes some children away from a solitary dredge, single line death beneath the stone. Should we be worried about this? You ask Ivor, pointing to the judge body. I don't think so. Still, I still couldn't hurt to have a few guards look around. Hours pass without warning. Okay. Ingrid's godstone is carved with ancient runes, which don't make much sense to you, though Eowyn tells you some of the Menders have deciphered them. It's how the Menders learn the language of the gods. Past the largest stone, a long series of slabs contain more writing all the way down the hill. The odd thing, he tells you, is that the writing occasionally changes depending on who is reading it. Usually it describes the history of the gods, but it can be about nearly any topic. Sadly, Eowyn doesn't know how to read it himself. Do no good, he says. As you're reading to the part, you hear screams from near the main godstone. The same boy is so curious about the dead dredge before a shrieking and pointing. For a moment, you think it must not have been dead. But then you see that they have opened a wrapping that was in dredge's hand. Wait, says Ivor, his arm, ac arm across your chest. This shouldn't be seen. Get everyone away. A child sweeps over you, Alet pushes past and gasps. Stop! Shall stop! shouts Ivor, but the curious onlookers have already seen it. Leave it. On the ground before the dead slinger is a small stony figure, its hand searching for something it can find. That's a baby. That dredge is a woman? We've been killing women. We've been slaughtering women and children this whole time, leaving them to die? In a war it's only the males who fight. We've been fighting this stretch the whole way. Why are women and children on their backs attacking us? They're not invading, they're running. Everyone stops dead in their tracks, the entire caravan is gathered around, aghast. When I spoke to Juno, she told me something was coming, she didn't know what. A darkness. Something black is covering the world, and the dredge are running from it, just as we are running from them. The serpent, the quake, it's all the beginning of the end. Ivor, you knew! Why, why didn't you say something? Ivor? 
When I was young, I killed one of the Sandal during the Second Great War. We called it Rays. Every time we would build our defenses, it would flatten them and push us back again. I became separated from the rest of the Val and stumbled upon Rays deep in snow snowstorm, alone. She was nursing. I threw my axe, it twisted in the wind. Her son died in her arms. She was so pathetic, kneeling in the snow. She didn't even try to stop me when I took her head. That's how I killed Asandur. When I found my way to Grofelheim, the Varl wanted to make me Kendr next to the king. I left, walked until I ended up in Skogur, where no one knew what I had done. The only sound is the wind blowing through the trees. Okay, now, but now we need to take the kid with us. For a long time, nobody says a thing until a child breaks the silence. What do we do with the baby? She asks, a lump forms in your throat, looking at the small obsidian creature screaming before you. And this is not taking it, really. You argue strongly for showing mercy and humanity. Some of the women in the caravan hesitantly agree to take in the dredged infant, while others are furious about bringing it along. Not long afterward, one of the women comes to you. Its swaddling was being held by this, she says, giving you a hairpin that looks distinctly undredged like. An inscription on the silver almost slips your notice. Persevere. From the goddess herself, if you ask me, the woman tells you. Mm, thank you. So do we now have one small dredge with us? Okay. You are making the usual rounds when you hear a rather loud debate coming from the area that we all have gathered. Ivor joins you as you approach. Ubin, you'd rather be known for falling asleep and dying in the corner of a madhouse than battling a cinder? No, I'd rather be known for not dying. No, don't even know what you're worried about. I did this hundred times in the Great Wars. Take some warriors, plow head first into the dredge. They follow you into the hills. Get lost. No, they're not following you. When you, do, you did this a hundred times, did you have Bellower leading them? Have you never heard about the time I hit Bellower in the head with a throwing axe? What about this? Careful, my friend. A lot of old history getting thrown around here. The warriors were just noting that there's a damn good number of dredge on our asses. Below we're pulling up the rear. This one thinks he can just wander up there and throw them off our tracks. How about some gratitude? Though you'd be happy to finally be oldest of all in the land, Ubin. I'm never happy to lose more Valkrum. Besides, I'm not convinced you're really older than me. Uh, old Ralfrey, <laughs> you've got here. Comments like that remind me, I've already wasted too much time doing nothing. In the old days, I'd already be halfway to the battlefield by now. Speaking of which, you call me Ingvar? You could ask Belor for your arm back. Don't think so. Not exactly in the mood right now. Alright then, I'll take hard work. You said hello. Krum and a good many of our royals head out toward the growing army of Dredge. Is he going to come back? He always has before. But this time feels different, I fear. Yeah, I don't think they're coming back either. Once we have only three days worth of food, I will come and buy some more. A flurry of snowfall seems to come out of nowhere and quickly thickens until you are unable to see that man in front of you. Uh, you shout out to complete halt, but the screaming whines drown out the sound. 
A day passes before the blizzard abates and classmates start to reappear from the snow drifts. It quickly becomes apparent that not everybody is where you last saw them, and a quick search of the area is not enough to recover all the missing classmen. Um, make a thorough search. It takes time to establish proper search teams, but you devise a way to quickly cover as much ground as possible. After a full day of searching, you find many survivors, but your successes are dampened by a number of frozen bodies and others who have simply vanished. Disheartened, you turn to travel. Okay, we can get to sing or home with me with morale. Get around, doubters! Echoes a shout in the distance as Krumr and his band of warriors break through nearby foliage. And behold, the invincible foul! The caravan is filled to see Krum return safely. Did the plan work? asks Ubin. Work? Of course it worked! Same old rage! Should be another day or two at least before they even find their own asses. And if you apologize, I'll tell you how I found this. Krum says, tossing a pair of leather gloves that look big enough to enough for a varl. He leans in close, whispering so Ubin can hear. Had something to do with a raven's nest and a hard hair tie. I don't think I really want to know how we found those. As Sacred Home approached us, we fear the worst. The once calm lake surrounding it now looks like a bowl that has been flipped. Proud homes sinking into muddy water. A side effect of the quake. What has the rest of the world become on the other side of those mountains? One catastrophe to another says a leaf as you pull into sink home. The town appears to be sinking into the lake. Townspeople peek from dark windows and makeshift hobbles further up the hill. No, says Ewing from frankly. Where is she? He runs to the front of the caravan looking out over the water. Juno isn't here and you get the creeping feeling you're not welcome either. Going up river looks out of the question. The beach is bare, aside from the occasional skeleton of a ruined fishing boat. You'll reluctantly set up camp in sinking town. All I'm saying is how long are you willing to wait? Well, taking stock of caravan, if inadvertently walked into the bed between Oddleaf and Eowind. As long as we need to. And I think we need to get out of here. I don't feel good about this place. Why? What's wrong? Something doesn't feel right. The people here are starting staring at us like those fortresses in the world wastes. I'm sorry, Ewin. I think all this right. I saw a man. The whole time we were setting up, he was just watching me. Mm, in a creepy way. How and how long before the dredge find us here? Juno will come. Just give it a little more time. Rook, listen to me. I need you to trust me on this. You're really worried about her, aren't you? What? Oh, I don't know. Worry doesn't begin to describe it. If she doesn't find us here or something has happened to her. Are you sure what you saw was real? It could have been a dream or I don't know. You are pretty exhausted. I, I don't know. To be honest, I'm not sure anymore. Everything is a blur. Don't tell the others I said that. I have to hope it was just a dream. What is it like to be a mender? Being a mender? I, I guess I never really thought about it like that. It's just part of me. They knew very young that I would join the order. Born into it, you could say. My mother and father, both menders. The guild is for lots of people now, builders and healers. Do they all pull lightning out of the sky? 
No, that's... that's not normal. It's one of the reasons I know Juno. She's one of the council. She helps me control things like this, so we don't end up scaring people. How exactly does weaving work? Well, the hardest part is usually seeing the threads. Everything is part of the tap tapestry. It's made of threads woven together. Uh, if you can see the threads, you can manipulate them. I don't know how to explain it, really. It's like trying to play a harp with invisible strings. Look at my stuff, for example. Some menders carve intricate patterns in the wood to help them remember the shapes of... Uh, like I said, how to explain. Why is Blue still following us? I saw Grofheim as it burned. Awin gets a faraway look in his eyes. The cinder blew through it like a tempest. The world fell in the thousands. Most of the sons left the city and headed south. Who knows where they are now? They might be destroying every town they come to or heading towards Arbrang. The lower stayed in Grofheim. Just for the sport of it, I think. As we flew to Einartov, I thought we must want to wipe the world off the map completely. But then he came after us. Maybe he knew Ivor was the one who killed Reyes. Maybe, but I... Let's just make sure he doesn't catch up. Do you think this is the end of the times? Uh, I don't want to think. I wish I could give you a better answer. Even if we escape the dredge, that serpent said a darkness was covering the world. I don't know how long that will take, or what it means even. I'm just trying to solve one problem at a time. The Menders are in our barn. If we can find ships and make it the capital, we might have a chance. Okay, I won't take any more of your time. No, it's okay, Yurk. I appreciate the talk. It's good to stay grounded. I spend all day worrying about serpents or Sundr. I think a lot of people are intimidated or scared, maybe, of me. Don't worry, it's nothing new, I'm used to it. Maybe sometime we can talk about things that don't include the world ending. Let's check out our heroes. What's that? What strength resist? And plus 3 strength, plus 3 break. Wait, break gives... Break is the amount of direct damage you can naturally do to an enemy's or more. I think I'll gotta give this to you. You have plus two armor. I'll gladly promote you with one to this and one more armor. And I would like to give you this. That gives plus two strength. That gives plus two armor. So I'll give you some more strength. And I think I'll stay with a 20 because we need to buy some more supplies market over here. Minus to aggro. No, back on S. Where renowned gets. Yeah, we need to get a lot. Yeah, pretty much. Okay, but well that's gonna be it for today. Thank you very much. Stay alive and see you soon. Bye!